Welcome back to Learn SDR. I'm Prof. Jason. Now we're going to transmit from the Pluto SDR and receive on the RTL SDR and look at what the differences are. In particular, there'll, there'll be a difference in clock rates for, for both the radio frequency carrier and also the sample rate that we have to be aware of. And this is part of a general example of transmitting from one radio to a different radio. It's a lot harder than what we did before, which was transmitting from the Pluto to itself, where all the clocks were synchronized. New radio. And I'd say the first thing I'm going to do follows the last, last example pretty well. So this will give you some, some time to, to try this again and catch up. So what I want is I want a Pluto sync. Pluto sync to put a signal into. And let me look at what the, what the frequency is. Let me actually give two of these things uh, names here. So let me give this the name of center frequency. Center frequency. And again, if, if I want to pass it to this Pluto block, since it's green, I have to make sure I'm passing an integer. So either I'll type an integer as my variable center frequency, or I'll just turn whatever I type into an integer. And my sample rate, I'll do int sample rate. And this way, my center frequency and my sample rate, if I use these variables for both, will be synced between my Pluto SDR and my RTL SDR up to differences in hardware. So, uh, OK, so it'll give me an error because I haven't defined those things yet. Let me make a variable 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 for the center frequency. So I have to pick a center frequency that both of these can, can deal with. And the RTL-SDR can go lower than the Pluto can by default without, without a range extending hack. Um, and the Pluto can go higher than the RTL-SDR. So in particular, the Wi-Fi band the 2.4 gigahertz band is not available to the RTL-SDR. So I have to pick, pick a lower band. And the next lowest convenient band, the next lowest kind of open industrial scientific and medical band in the US is 915 megahertz. And so I'll set my center frequency to be that. And if you're in a lab and you're sharing this with, with other people, you might want to go to 914 or 916 just to, to be a little bit away from, from others. Uh, so you don't interfere with each other. You can coordinate that amongst yourselves. And my sample rate, just to start with, I'll set this to be one megahertz, just for nice, nice round numbers. And what do I want to send to my, my Pluto? Well, for now, the first thing I'll send is I'll just send a, a single tone, a single cosine. So let me do a signal source. Signal source. I'll connect that up. And my sample rate, uh, cosine is fine. That'll send a complex exponential. My frequency, let me call that signal frequency. And I'll put that on a range slider. Uh, my amplitude can be one. That's fine. I'll send it full range. Yeah, so let me put range. Signal, signal frequency on a range slider. Let me have that go from, I don't know, a default value of 20 kilohertz. And let me have that go from minus 100 kilohertz to plus 100 kilohertz. And a step size of one, that's, that's fine. OK, now, as usual, I want to watch what I'm sending and what I'm receiving. So I'll put my pair of time and frequency syncs here. Time sync, frequency sync. This is one of the more common things I do, but labeling them is, is kind of important. So in my time sync, I will label it as uh, transmit real part, transmit imaginary part, and maybe I'll go um, times eight there for this number of points. And for the frequency sync, I'll do the same. I'll do a pretty high resolution here. And uh, I'll call this transmit. OK, so for now, I'm done with my, my 
Pluto block, my Pluto side of things. Um, I've got my Pluto pretty close to my, my RTLSDR. So actually maybe there's one more thing I wanna do, which is uh, put a variable for the transmit, transmitter attenuation here. Instead of the default 10, I'll call this TX attenuation. Let me copy that and plunk down a new range slider. Range, range slider where I uh, where I set that. So transmitter attenuation, uh, default value ten. That's that's fine. That's pretty loud for such a short range. But I'll start at zero, stop at one hundred. That's that's probably good enough for now. Okay. So then for the Receiver, I'll look for RT LSDR source. And I have a couple options here. I have to make sure my sample rate is set correctly. My center frequency, I want to make sure that it's the same center frequency. I've already called that center frequency. So this is orange. I don't have to turn it into an integer. And the RTL, there's several gains here, and they're uh, this sort of a a generic block for lots of different similar radios. The only one that actually affects the RTL SDR is this first gain, RF gain. So I'll make a variable for that, RF gain, and I'll put that on a slider, a range slider. And I'll go uh, I'll have the default be 10. That's fine. It goes from zero to, I don't know, again, maybe 70 or something. I forget exactly what the range is here. Uh, well, if we go out of range, it'll either throw an error or it won't bother changing anything. And let's, let's do the normal thing where we're looking at in QT GUI. I'll have a look at it in time and in frequency. You know what I should have done? Let me do this as an example. I will just copy this and paste it. And that way all of my sample rates and everything else are, are identical. I'll just change the name. Instead of transmit, receive, I'll do receive real, sorry, transmit real, uh, receive imaginary and the frequency plot. Uh, right. Receive. Okay, now oh, I have to give it a title. Pluto TX RTL RX. That's fine. Okay, so now if I play this again, I should be transmitting a tone that I can control and looking at a tone that I can see. So let's see how well that, that works for my pair. All right, so this is the frequency spectrum of what I'm transmitting. It's a mathematical computation, so it's ex extremely narrow and it's basically zero everywhere else. It's 14 orders of magnitude down from its peak. And the received signal is also a, a spike, but there's some, some noise on the receiver. This is the actual real and imaginary parts of what I'm receiving. And those look pretty nice. If I zoom in here, I can see, uh, see that they're pretty clean. Let me zoom back out the right mouse button. Let me check out this frequency here. So, well, let, let me point out two things. First of all, my transmit frequency should be exactly 20 kilohertz. And my received frequency does not look like it's exactly 20 kilohertz. It looks more like six kilohertz. And you can see that these are the same scale. So this is the transmit real and imaginary parts on a time scale that goes up to 8,000 microseconds. This is the receive real and imaginary parts on the same time scale. And you can see that the receive carrier is a lot lower than the transmit carrier. And as I change this, they both go up and down together. There's a little bit of a delay. They both go up and down together, but there's always some offset. And again, this is because the clocks are not perfect and they're not synchronized. So let me actually, uh, let me actually tune, well, let me set this to zero. So if I were to transmit a zero, uh, sorry, a zero frequency signal, that means transmitting a constant. 
And right now that constant is mostly negative, real, and a tiny bit positive imaginary. But it doesn't matter. It's a unit, uh, unit magnitude constant. And what I'm receiving is I'm receiving a signal that, that is not a constant. It has, it's at some frequency. And if I measure this frequency very accurately, that'll tell me the frequency offset of these two clocks. And if I look, the, fre the frequency is, is actually negative. So when I'm transmitting at what should be exactly 915 megahertz on the Pluto, I'm receiving a signal that the RTLSDR thinks is a little bit below 915 megahertz. It's 15 kilohertz below. Sorry, there's 215. So if I zoom in here, yeah, it's about 15 kilohertz below. So some of that, well, this may be due to two things. One is the hardware clocks are not, well, it's definitely due to the fact that the hardware clocks are not synchronized. Now, whether that's because there's an actual error in hardware or it's because uh, various uh, clocks have to round to integer numbers of multiplications and divisions, that's a little bit hard to tell. And it's not, it's not actually particularly relevant. One thing we can see is if I were to really heat one of these up or cool it down, sometimes you can see the, the clocks drift relative to each other. So um, right now this has been running for a while, but if I just plug it in, it would be interesting to track if this is exactly locked at, at minus 15 kilohertz or if, uh, or if this will slowly drift down to here as it heats up and temperature stabilizes. So this is just something you have to keep in mind. Another thing that you have to keep in mind, I'm gonna do something and this is probably not going to work. And I'm, I'm gonna to try to plot what I'm sending and what I'm receiving on the same plot. Now, this is something that you really want to do, right? Because if you want to compare what you're sending to what you're receiving, but uh, why doesn't this work? Well, the reason why this doesn't work is that not only the radio frequency clocks are different, but the sample clocks are slightly different. So you have to be really careful. The way you would do this, if you want to plot more than one thing, you just change number of inputs to two. Uh, and that will give you two inputs here. So let me plot my RTL SDR receiver on that input and my uh, Pluto, the signal I'm sending into the Pluto on that input. Um, this will probably run for a while just fine, but every time this time sync plots these 1024 points, it'll eat 1024 points from each of these sources and nothing guarantees that these sources are are exactly in sync. So this source is limited by how quickly the, the Pluto SDR sync is, is taking samples, how fast its sample clock is running. And this RTL SDR source is putting out samples at whatever speed its sample clock is running. And if those two are slightly out of sync, eventually you'll get uh, buffer overruns and underruns. And you won't even see that. It won't even show up, it'll just freeze. So let's just see how long we go before we freeze that plot. So here are both of them shown simultaneously. And so far, so good. I can zoom in on the two signals. I can change to a higher signal frequency. And this might work for a while, but eventually, and this happened in the lab, I guess these sample clocks were a little bit further off then. Uh, after a few seconds, it actually just froze. So I will, Put that out as a warning that this might work and it might even work for a few minutes but it's it's not a great long-term strategy and i can pause this let me let me set this to a particular some nice frequency here so let me pause it not only do you see that the signal strengths are different but the the uh the phases are going to drift with respect to each other because the frequencies are different um well while i've got this going i can let me play with the gain parameter so I can play with the gain parameter of the RTL SDR until it saturates and turns more into a square wave. Let me put that down again. You know, sort of a nice, a nice range where it's, you know, maybe about 0.5 up and 0.5 down. I can play with the transmitter attenuator and achieve the same effect. So if I increase the transmitter attenuator, the Pluto is a little slower to to update its parameters. If I increase the transmitter attenuator the received signal should go down and down and down. And there it's pretty much going.
gone. And if I decrease the transmitter attenuator, now I'm making the Pluto transmit really loudly. Yes, I'm pretty much almost about to max out. And if I transmit with no attenuation, I start to get some clipping on the top and the bottom. Uh, and you actually see that there are some extra frequencies here that show up, sort of harmonics as a result of this clipping. So you always want to stay kind of well within the range. I'm surprised how long this has worked. Oftentimes I get uh, I get errors. Okay, let me stop sharing there and take questions on, on how to deal with these two things at the same time. The next lesson, we will transmit something interesting between the two things. And we'll start to talk about how various data transmission techniques work.